All right, we're going to begin. We're going to begin uh, lecture four. I know there is a uh, an exam, I believe, that's going to cover. Uh, it should cover uh, the first six videos that that I posted here. Um, this lecture four. The seventh video, I think, won't be on the exam. Uh, just lectures one through three in all parts on the first exam. In this lecture, we'll be covering quantum theory. Uh, not in great detail, but if you look at your notes on electron configuration, you'll see that it talks about uh, electronic structure of the atom. Um, principles of quantum numbers. This is in your uh, ThinkQuest uh, links on the site. And angular momentum and uh, magnetic quantum number. We're not going to do all that. All I want to do is talk about the uh, electron configuration. Okay, later on it will be important to understand the configuration because we'll be talking about a hybridization, uh, SP hybridization, and, and what that means in terms of forming covalent bonds between uh, non-ionic compounds. So this will be a little introduction to electron configuration. Uh, normally I start by talking about the atom. Uh, as a as a building, and in that building uh, we have floors, and in on the floors we have apartments. In those apartments we have rooms, and in the rooms we have people. Now, for the sake of the time I have, I'm not going to use that analogy. I'm going to just um, explain the concepts and um, uh, simply compare. Uh, configuration means that if you have, we've been drawing an atom where we provide an, a nucleus and, and we typically draw this circle, this circle representing the electron cloud <coughs> so in that cloud uh, you would have electrons and and I, I also illustrated the uh, the symbol that I think it was popularized by Disney when I grew up but uh, in class student mentioned that, oh, that's the Jimmy Neutron symbol. <laughs> but it's simply an idea uh, illustrating uh, how the electrons revolve around the nucleus. Well, this is the same kind of idea when we talk about electron configuration. Is how do they, or how are electrons organized in space around the nucleus? And it's this again, remember, that's the, the uh, um, electronic forces okay, between the uh, protons and electrons that give us the different characteristics of the elements. And of course the uh, atomic weight contributed by neutrons also uh, give the elements their distinction. So how are these uh, electrons configured? So if we look at an atom, an atom is composed of uh, shells and there are one through seven shells. Okay, there's seven shells and 
So these shelves are, are kind of like floors of an apartment. Within the floors are, of course, apartments. But these are referred to as sub shelves. Okay, and the sub shelves um, uh -oh. exist in four different sizes, just like apartments would have different sizes. You have the smallest, which is designated S. A little larger one called P, even larger D, and the largest that we have observed is F. So these are apartments or subshells of those shells. Now we're getting to how these electrons are then organized. The electrons are organized in rooms in those apartments. Those rooms are referred to as orbitals. And so if we're looking at these uh, subshells, S, P, D, and F, or apartments, how many rooms are present? Okay, so we use the analogy rooms. In the apartment or subshell S, we have capacity of one room. In the subshell P, there is, or there are three rooms. In subshell D, we have five rooms, or five orbitals. And in F, the F subshell, we have seven orbitals. Of course, if we have a building with floors, apartments, and rooms, we will need occupants. Okay, and so those occupants are referred to as the electrons. And so if we're looking at the subshell S, P, D, and F, we always use the lowercase. How many electrons or persons can occupy those rooms? The maximum number of electrons that can be in subshell S, which contains one orbital, put one in parentheses, is two. The maximum number that subshell P can contain is six. The maximum number subshell D, which has five orbitals, can contain is ten. And of course you can uh, follow that line of reasoning and come to the conclusion that there are fourteen electrons in subshell F, and you would be correct. So, how is this useful? Well, it is useful because it will help us to give the uh, notation for electron configuration for each of the elements in the periodic table. And that notation uh, is determined, or has been determined, is um, simply a, a way of representing the energy levels that are present in the subshells. There, are mul there, are mul there is an energy level or pattern associated with the arrangement of these electrons and subshells. And what I'm going to do is, in this uh, part, we'll call this part one, and I'll begin another video so that I can lay out uh, the entire uh, configuration from S to F, from orbitals 
1 through 7 uh, for shells 1 through 7 as well. Okay? All right.